So, so um, I have been using the um, LSC archive, and I discovered something very interesting in the John Watkins archive um, that involves Polya's influence on uh, uh, Lakatos' philosophy of mathematics. And that, that's what I want to talk about. I want to show documents. I, I want to let um, George Paglia and Lakatos and Fire up and tell the story. Okay, that, that's the, the purpose of this talk. Um, I, it, I, the um, contacts, contacts. This is an answer to Professor uh, Hartman's talk. Um, I grew up in, at Stanford in Berkeley where um, the Hilbert research program was not taken seriously. And uh, that's the viewpoint that Paglia and Lakatos philosophy of mathematics uh, made. And it, I'm trying to bring it back to life by showing what, what was written from the late 50s um, into the 1970s when Lakatos died. Uh, and my argument, which I think has not widely believed, is that uh, Paglia Mathematical Heuristics Research Program needed the assistance of philosophy of science, and the Popperians, Popper, and uh, Lakatos were seen by uh, Paglia, by Bernays, uh, as a, a way of making their research program uh, more accessible and more widely believed. Uh, the, uh, let's see. So the, the, the best way to understand the importance of George Pauli's influence on Lakatos' philosophy of mathematics is to read the correspondence. And the crucial letter is a letter John Wat Watkins wrote to George Paglia just after the death of Imre Lakatos. Uh, and th then I want to show the background correspondence starting in a 1958 letter in Hungarian from Alia to Lakatos, suggesting the topic for um, proofs and refutations, that was Lakatos' thesis. Uh, and um, after giving the background, I, I want to show a letter from Paul of uh, 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 to Lakatos to sort of give the um, background of, of what Lakatos and Feyerabend were doing. Uh, and to basically answer Hartman's argument, it seems to me the problem with Bayesianism, and this is the Popperian view, is that it assumes the Hilbert research program that mathematics is just formulas. And Paglia's heuristic was, was against the the Hilbert program um, and uh, is maybe best expressed by Lakatos' quasi-empirical mathematics. Uh, so I have a whole lot of slides that I'm not going to be able to go through in detail. So I've uploaded them to my website, which is www.tdl.com, tilde S. Meyer. And so I made a change so the Google web crawler has not indexed it yet. So you have to actually type that exact URL into your browser and you'll get to the page and then you can select the uh, slides which are there. Um, in, in Britain it takes about five or six minutes to, to upload the slides uh, because of the do document images, somehow in the U.S. not. And, I'm not, and I hope people will uh, download the slides and read the uh, actual letters in detail. I I'm showing the letters and I've typed in the text that, that I will read. So, so one of, one of the, the messages from Paglia to John Watkins after Lakatos' death is he was saddened that nobody wrote a simpler to understand 
proofs and reputations that would further extend Pauli's theory of heuristics. And if there's any uh, philosophers of mathematics or you have students, I think that's a project that still makes sense. I, I think that this is a place where philosophy and mathematics can be can improve physics and it can, and it can improve, improve mathematics. Uh, and uh, Polly was very skeptical of probability. Popper was skeptical of, of probability theory, and especially Bayesianism. And that's what I think the message of, the, of these letters are. And so, so here, so in, in February 11, 1974, Watkins sent a letter to George Paglia asking in detail what was uh, Paglia's influence on Lakatos' thesis and the book Proofs and Reputation. So I want to start by reading that letter. Uh, Professor G. Paglia from Zurich. Uh, uh, Watkins wrote from LSE, obviously. Uh, Polly was in Zurich at the time. In case you have not already heard, I am writing to give you the sad news that Irving Lakatosh died suddenly from coronary thrombosis on 2 February. I enclosed a copy of the obituary for him in composing this. Uh, I took the liberty of asking a Hungarian friend of Irving's to read through the long correspondence mainly in Hungary between Imre and yourself, knowing that Imre had dedicated proofs and reputation jointly to Karl Popper and yourself, I was anxious to get as straight as possible, get as straight as possible your influence on the magnificent work of art. Irmi, oops. <laughs> Irby has often told me that it was you who suggested him making a case study of the Descartes Euler conjecture. It appeared from your correspondence that you must have suggested it to him when you met, apparently for the first time in Edinburgh in 1958. I hope I have these facts right. If I did not, do please put me right. Of course, we in the department here are, are badly stricken. I close up copy of three funeral tributes that were paid to Imre. Uh, and so this is the letter. And so here's the reply on March 16th from George Paglia to uh, John Watkins. I think Paglia was about 75 when this all, all when this correspondence happened. And so Here's the front page, the second page. Uh, if you download the slide images, it, you, can ex you can enlarge the PDF files to read um, these letters for yourself if you want. Okay, so here's Pai's reply from Palo Alto, 16 March 1974. Dear Professor Watkins, I'm grateful to your letter of 11 February, which forwarded from Zurich reached me today. I heard the sad news about Ermey already. A Cambridge friend sent me an obituary from the Times, which as I see from your letter you have written, I'm grateful for this obituary. It seems to me very good, especially the facts about my connection with Ermey and his dissertation are completely accurate. Uh, I told Ermey and he agreed to some extent that his proofs and reputations are too brilliant. The dialogue with a major part of the Greek alphabet is too involved. Or he should publish it again, or he should publish it again, oops, uh, or followed by a simpler and more direct version. And that simpler and more direct version never got written, and I hope somebody will write one. Uh, it would have a broader and possibly deeper influence May I ask you, is there among his papers at least a beginning of that simpler version? Are there among his papers a few reprints of proof from refutations? If, if there are, could I have one for the library at Stanford? <coughs> I have a copy, of course, and Stanford will inherit it. But for the moment, I would like to keep it. And I have a vague hope that I might find a talented 
and devoted young man to undertake that simpler version, perhaps as a dissert dissertation. I re wish to repeat my thanks. And uh, this is the proof that, in fact, Paglia was the prime motivator of uh, Lakatos thesis. Uh, and so then Watkins replied on March 25th, Professor G. Paglia, uh, who is in Palo Alto now, dear Professor Paglia, I, I, how delighted I was to get your letter. I enclose a copy of Proof of Reputations. It is a duplicated copy, but I hope that it's clear enough for Stanford to make further copies from it. So John Watkins was exceedingly smart to understand, to ask, Paul, yeah, exactly what his influence on the Lakatos thesis was. So far as I know, Irby did not start on the simpler version that you encouraged him to write. He was under contract with the Cambridge University Press to turn it into a book, and perhaps would have done something along the lines that he suggested, but he kept postponing this work because he wanted to first, first to finish a book on the methodology of scientific research programs. You see, we are launching an appeal fund one who is aimed to publish as much as possible of Lakatos unpublished papers. This is all material in the Watkins archive, uh, who continues, and here I would like to ask you for a favor, which, if you grant it, will be of great value. You will be willing to be one of the signatories in the appeals letter, and, and that's the uh, uh, appeals letter that I think is funded in the Lakatosh Archive, Lakatosh Library, uh, and various other things. Uh, and uh, I, I was relieved to learn from you that in obituary we got the facts about your connection to Irby Wright. Indeed, getting your letter was one of the nicest experiences that I've had recently. Uh, and, oops. So th this is the reply, which is pretty simple. Uh, the gap cannot be. So many thanks for your kind letter. This is Polly's response on 20 April. I am particularly grateful for the copy of Proofs and Reputations. It is a great loss that Ermi did not turn it into a book. There is a gap that cannot be filled yet. Still, I should try to find somebody who can at least. Uh, do at least a little, write a simplified, more accurate version. So I basically, the, the reason I knew this story is because uh, my office mate in Berkeley Computer Science, uh, Diane McIntyre, had been in a teacher education program run by Polly Still. Uh, and um, if she had lived, she died in 1992, I think she hopefully would have written the simplified uh, PNR. So, so now I want to go back to the original letters. This is from the Lakatosh archive um, of uh, the letter Paul you sent to, to the young, to the student who had just immigrated from uh, Hungary, escaped from Hungary, uh, and was a student at Cambridge. And so here is Paul's original letter. Uh, sent from Zurich in, in August 1958. Uh, my dear friend, this is translated by someone in the Lakatosh archive. Many thanks for your letter of 30th November, also with ugly delay for your postcard from the beginning of October. Let us start with the question, which the answer is simple. And he's staying uh, in, uh, he gives where he's staying. Um, I'm glad that you are studying with interest those things which you feel belong to your topic. One must follow one's feelings with a certain degree of skepticism. You will return to Euler's theorem when the spirit moves you, and this is how it should be. This is how Paya encouraged encourages. Uh, Gonset and Bernays are giving a joint seminar here. The subject for this term has been induction, and I have taken part in the discussion industrial. I realize that what I said about this in mathematical reasoning uh, needs amplification. It would be interesting to discuss this and other things with you at Stanford, from among the logicians at Stanford. The philosophers don't count. 
that um, I was a Stanford student, so that Stanford philosophy was taught as world culture for some reason back then. Then there was the Institute for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences at Stanford, through which one could arrange something. Unfortunately, my connection is it's actually approximately zero. Uh, true, I traveled a great deal from Stanford, lectured at Berkeley, and uh, uh, most, mostly this was a letter that motivated, that I believe motivated Lakatosh, uh, uh PhD thesis and the uh, Proofs and Refutations book. And here's, um, so, uh, Lakatos then wrote his thesis, and the next um, letter in the Lakatos archive jumps to, to 1965. After uh, Lakatos is in the process, I think, of publishing uh, proofs and reputations. So, dear Professor Kalia, um, uh, thank God the conference which I've been organizing, this is from Lakatos. Thank God, the conference which I've been organizing in the last few months is now over, and I can breathe uh, again and hopefully get down to my work. It will take weeks to get back into the atmosphere of it. Never a conference again in my life. Otherwise, socially, the meeting was quite pleasant, and there were lots of interesting and nice people, and I very much wish you had been here. Bernays is one of the most brilliant contributors he was really at the top of his forum, one of the best successors of the conference. Successes of the conference, by the way, was my Hungarian friend Zebu, who delivered a brilliant lecture on Greek mathematics. I'm not now, uh, uh, not to be now, going to try to arrange for him a uh, fellowship at Stanford. I have already spoken to Supis, and I'm only waiting for the list of publications to be sent, and then Popper, William Neal, and Bernays. We shall try to do something. I don't know whether you know his work. If so, could you help? Um, I've been planning to get, again, be in Berkeley to learn some logic. I think from Tarski, which never happened. This time I hope to come to Berkeley, which will be near you, so I hope that I have the opportunity of profiting by your help. And, and then Lakatosh um, worries about Paulia's heuristic research program not being accepted. Uh, the context is that uh, AI at the time was trying to use it to take over the term heuristic to mean the proximate algorithm and instead of quasi-empirical mathematical proofs or reality. I looked at Mary Hess's book, Models and Analogy. Max Black also wrote a book in 1967 on models and methodology. Neither of them mention you, although Mary Hess has detailed the three references which she admits you. Frankly, I don't think you should care too much. So this is Lakatosh. <coughs> These, especially Mary Hess, are illiterate philosophers without real standards. However, I think this should be put right somehow, and I'm now going to put a reach search student of mine to work on this, and perhaps a note will come out of it comparing your work on models and analogies with recent philosophical work on the subject. This, at least put, this will at least put the record right. On your suggestion, I thought you would like to do something about the connection between uh, heuristics and ep epidemiology. Uh, Alia, uh, Answers that, that he's not a philosopher. Um, and so here's, here's Paglia's reaction and criticism of proofs and reputations. So, uh, sent from Zurich in 19, uh, uh, November 19, 6, 1965. At least I have had a relatively peaceful work, relative freedom of proofreading translations. Uh, twice from the beginning to end, handwriting unclear was new to me. Uh, I read it slowly with all the concentration I am capable of. But I wanted to write a long letter to you. I realized, however, so so Paulia reacted in a positive but not totally positive way to Lakatos' thesis. I wanted to write a long letter to you. I realized, however, in a fairly short time, that only a considerably shorter letter 
letter would ever have a chance of being written if I wanted to finish it in finite time. I have written three pages of it. I could not continue it after I would con not continue it either. Now I've torn those three pages into pieces and she'll be writing a short letter and as a untidy one as well. Otherwise I shall never finish it. My main impression, do not keep correcting, put P, P in our book as it is apart from possible in details. It is true that PR is in many respects confusing. If the reader tries to attach the different personalities to the various Greek letters which stand for them, if he tries further to distinguish the numerous new terms from each other, on almost every page of jumps a new term, then he would get dazed. So this is the uh, rationale for all his hope of a simpler proofs and refutations. At least this is the experience of the reader um, who is writing this letter. But the article is interesting, amusing, humorous, and most of all, unrated, stimulating, as it is. The elimination of each second disadvantage could be done only at the cost of losing advantage in the first order. This is my strong uh, impression. Therefore, it would be possible to consider repeating the most essential in a later chapter with, with fewer anecdotes and more calm. Yes, think of it. Consider it. I can see fairly clearly how PNR relates to my own work. The basic difference is I would hardly be able to say anything on epistemology, which I would deserve the attention of the public. So here's um, Holly was a mathematician, okay, and um, he was not a philosopher. And here's what he writes: Had I been able to say anything about it, even that I would have refrained from it. It is difficult enough to have a public accept heuristics. I would not have wanted to make it even more difficult to find it with other things. The main point um, it, I make is a number of points about pure heuristics as well. Okay, so let, so, um, the, the um, this is the end of the, of the material. I included in the slide something on uh, Pauli in 1920 proved the central limit theorem of uh, probability, which when I was a Stanford student was taught that probability it was not um, a good theory and uh, that Pauli's central limit theorem from the 1920s proved it. <laughs> And so let me go through, um, in, in the, I, I'm also going to upload my uh, extended abstract. So here's the argument. How you hope second generations pop you would help develop his research program, just as Matt Planck and Albert Einstein hoped the Vienna Circle and Berlin Circle philosophers would develop philosophy of physics. Pauli became more skeptical of Hil Hilbert Formitz's logic programs through his career. And I believe Lakatos is modern and still progressive. And I was I have a paper in, in the slides is an argument for fire ovens uh, in defense of classical physics, trying to show it. Um, and I'm basically testifying. And if Diane McIntyre had lived, I think she would have written a simplified book. Um, and so let me finish with the timeline of Paulius rejection of Hilbert's program. 1920, uh, Pauli introduced the central limit theorem of probability. 1926, Paul Findler um, solved the um, uh, Gödel's incompleteness results without tying it to any particular program, such, such, such as, uh, let, let me continue. Uh, Polish, in 45, Polly publishes how to solve in plausible reasoning. And uh, in the 50s, Polly helped uh, Lakatos with the uh, uh, proofs and reputations. 1969, this is important, part of this research program, uh, Fissler defined a continuum for which the continuum hypothesis is true contradicting data's proof. The extended abstract has all the references. Uh, and 
uh, in the 60s, probably easiest to understand of expression of Pauli's program is fire out in defense of classical physics. Uh, I, as I've prepared for this, I, I think uh, uh, Popper has much stronger influence on all this. In particular, uh, Popper is statistical physics. Uh, and, and here's some quotations, one from uh, Prof Professor Worrell. Some mathematicians believe that while the method of proof analysis described by Lakatos may be applicable to the study of polyhedra, it may not be applicable to real mathematics. And Fire Oven's view of the Popperians, I will criticize all theoreticians of science. By all, I mean, of course, those who count Popper, Kuhn, Lakatos, the anti Kuhn, Lakatos, and not the anti Carnap, uh, uh, Lakatos. Uh, and so, so here's some modern examples. Uh, Fire Oven wrote that, that new by Norman logic ruined physics, but in fact, uh, Von Neumann had already abandoned it. And um, uh, here, here's a modern example of quasi empirical mathematics. Data can tell us cuts right, for the definition of real numbers are not this, the same as the Cantor realization because there's an algorithm involved. And um, three state logic needs quasi empirical mathematics. So that's the talk. On my website is the extended abstract with the references and the songs. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for giving perfect time. We have now 10 to 15 minutes for So, uh, John, do you have any comments or recollections? Uh, before my time, really, uh, uh, when Imre was, this is uh, the build up to writing the Cambridge PhD. Obviously, I didn't know, know him then. I was only. 15 or 16 years old, so I wouldn't know. Uh, I mean, I, I, I wasn't defend the thing you said that you thought was wrong, I wasn't defending that, just saying that that's a reaction that you get from, or used to get from... from yes, I tried, I tried to say that. Yeah. It, it, it's it's quasi-empirical. You know, when you talk about polyhedra, you're thinking of, you know, cardboard boxes and stuff and picture frames and empirical things, and it doesn't really apply. But we try to, uh, anyway, Quash that response by publishing the stuff on Cauchy sequences and so on. That it was also part of his PhD thesis. Yeah, so it's uh, a great editorial job. Yeah. yeah, so that was it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll just make a few comments. I mean, yeah, if, if there are no questions, we can, we can surely take another seven minutes or so, if everybody's happy. Or well, we can start the next talk, whichever is. No, I, th I think it's perfectly fine to, to use another seven to ten minutes. Could I ask a question just before we do that? What, what's, what's the connection? I, I, I'm not seeing the connection between fire oven and polio yet. I mean... Intellectually, I'm not saying that there weren't okay, so, uh, so, uh, correspondence. But. So, yeah, uh, okay, I, 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 um, I left the, the fire on the part. So, um, at Stanford, um, Polya's heuristic program was believed, it was believed by phys physicists. So, so, one example is there's a textbook in quantum mechanics by Leonard Schiff that was used from like 48 to 60 for introductory graduate school quantum mechanics that used the Paglia quasi-empirical mathematics view. Um, it was anti-formalist with lots of comments about um, make sure this approximation may be tricky, be careful, that's that sort of comment. Uh, Fire Oven was invo invited in, in the late 60s, 67, say, to lecture at Stanford, um, uh, Felix Bloch was uh, believed Popper's uh, statistical view of uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, fire up the, the way I read Fire Oven's uh, writing on Niels Bohr is that he was defending Popper, although. Um, Popper expressed it as, as criticizing um, Orian quantum mechanics. 
Fire Oven said he wasn't criticizing Neil Spohr's actual writing. That, that, that's the connection. Is that? Okay, so if there's time, I would read the Fire Robin letter because it, I think, shows the relationship between Fire Robin and Akatosh. Uh, and um, at this time, uh, Alan Musgrave and Lakatosh were helping Fire Robin with his defense of classic physics paper, which was like 1967. And that's the source of this letter. Ha having read, reread my paper in defense of classical physics, I think I would like to have some off prints of it no matter what the cost. I remember you said off prints were impossible, but I did not connect the idea of impossibility until you and I are sure to compel all the manuscript you want. For, I think from the publishers who, that is, who are on the whole reasonable. So um, Fire Robin wanted some off prints and I think uh, Lakatos was saying they were uh, not available. Uh, that Kuhn is in part of the story too, but I didn't really include it in, in this talk. The last two weeks I spent in fever, free of antibiotics, going back and forth between Stanford and Berkeley, lecturing in both places. I met Bigner, who attended my first lecture, and it's very charming. On the whole, I try to convince my audience, Hilbert and by Neumann ruin physics, which apparently no one is prepared to swallow, despite my splendid arguments. Main point, the formally manuscripts are very, and I couldn't figure out this word, we can now prove in the formalism what before we accepted on the basis of a guess, but is the result a correlation to experience. But in the result, the correlation to experience becomes so loose that we were sometimes almost showing metaphysics. And this is, I see this as Paglia's uh, um, heuristic or quasi empirical mathematics. That, that would be the argument. Interspersed in my lecture on quantum theory, I would have remarked that our arguments against philosophy in the Supis fashion. Supis was a logician. Um, in, in my paper, um, Hintika, when I was at Stanford, was the one professor who was part of both the anti-formalist Paglia research program and the logicist Supis program. Uh, he, he, and Hintika was one of my favorite professors. Uh, I, and then um, uh, Fire Oven was sick. In like 1978, he, he went to Mayo Clinic and they figured out to, a, a lot of, um, whatever they figured out, he got much better. Uh, and then, do you want me to send a book list for my lecture at LSE? Uh, this was a time when uh, Fire Robin was teaching at a lot of universities and taking jobs and uh, uh, and then uh, resigning. <laughs> so that's my talk.